Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. So I decided to come out here next to my propane tanks because the topic I want to cover is the most common home heating fuel types and their uh, respective costs for each different type of fuel. So there are a kind of a big gamut of different options you can choose from. Uh, the most common being natural gas, propane, electric, fuel oil, wood, and then maybe coal, but those are really the main five, I would say. So I've got a sheet here and it's got current pricing on it for uh, what the rates have been for kind of all these different types of fuel sources uh, here in the Midwest United States. And so I'm in Minnesota specifically. Uh, so these rates are gonna vary nationwide, uh, but you can look up pretty easily the local rates for whatever types of fuel that you have available to you. And I will link in the description to a really helpful resource that you can uh, basically calculate and look at the different fuel types that are available in your area and punch in the numbers for the prices and you can get a really good idea of what the different costs are. So if you're looking at replacing your heating system or adding a dual fuel option, you'll be able to kind of see exactly what the best option is. So. Let's go ahead and I'll break down the sheet for you and show you a close up here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, here it is. So I took and punched in all the numbers and then wrote out this document giving us our current October 2018 uh, rates here for uh, this area. And it's probably pretty similar in most of the Midwest United States, I would guess. Uh, so here we go. Natural gas at the top here. Uh, natural gas has been very inexpensive re in recent years and it is pretty much unbeatable period as far as its cost compared to other types of fuels. So it can be sold in a few different units. So we'll just go across each line here. So this is a MCF or a thousand cubic feet. And then the cost per each of those units in this case is $9.85. And then we need to know the exact amount of heat energy that is in each unit. So in this case, a thousand cubic feet of natural gas equals approximately 1,031,000 BTUs. Now that can vary a little bit based on region, but it's supposed to stay really close to that. Uh, so oh, camera almost tipped over there, uh, but that is about how many BTUs that we have in one unit of natural gas. Now efficiency over here is something that you need to pay attention to if you're gonna input it into a form. 95% uh, is pretty standard for all the high efficiency furnaces that we install routinely. And so that's a pretty safe number to put in there. If you have a boiler that's like naturally drafted, sometimes you're gonna be closer to like 80% efficiency. So just pay attention to that because that's gonna affect your ultimate cost because you're gonna lose 5% of those BTUs are gonna just go out the exhaust. All right, so our total cost ends up being just slightly over $1,000 for 100 million BTUs. Okay, I think I'm gonna touch on this right in the beginning. Um, I did a video, a separate video on how many million BTUs it takes to heat a house for an entire year. Uh, I'll link to that in the description as well. But I also notated it down here. So uh, our 1500 square foot house here in Southwest Minnesota, use exactly 563 gallons of propane in one year, including the gas range. And this comes to 51.457 million BTUs. So 50 million BTUs heated our little house here. I'll give you a shot of the house here. It's up over there. Oh, there she is. So little square 24 by 24 farmhouse. And it's about 1500 square feet. We've got a uh, living space in the attic upstairs, main level, and some in the basement as well. Anyway, so that's the that's the house that we were heating during that time. And the gas range in the kitchen used probably very little as far as uh, how much fuel that that contributed to that usage. So I thought that that 50 million BTU thing was just kind of a helpful guide to knowing and giving a little bit more meaning to that 100 million BTU uh, number there. So 100 million BTUs, we'll heat our house for almost two years. So if your house is bigger or you live in a colder climate or warmer climate, you're going to use less or more. So it's 
going to vary, obviously. <clears throat> now, uh, when you look at your natural gas bill, uh, most likely there's going to be um, discrepancies in which unit it's billed out as. Uh, so it can either be billed out as MCF uh, or CCF uh, or per therm. And so one therm is 1 million BTUs. So that's really easy to figure out. So if it is a one thousand dollars for a hundred million then it's going to be um what is that yeah it's a it's a dollar per something <laughs> anyway it's pretty easy to do the conversions on it and so you can follow that up some more if you if you have different units you can convert them fairly easily okay we're going to move on propane is the next one here and it's just very similar to natural gas except for it's in these big tanks like we have here and uh, that right now in our area is $1.44 a gallon uh, or so and we have 91,333 BTUs per unit 95% efficiency uh, so it's the same like a gas furnace and um, that comes to 1,660 or so so that's also not too bad now this price per gallon can vary a lot uh, nationwide, I think right now it's closer to $2 average. Um, and then like in Alaska, I was just talking to my brother-in-law, their price for propane is $4 a gallon. So that's why this cost per unit is very important to be aware of. Okay, electric resistance. So 12 cents per kilowatt, each kilowatt hour, kilowatt hour, uh, contains 3,412 BTUs of potential heat. And so that comes out at 100% efficient because it's electric resistance heat. So you're talking about like baseboard heaters or an electric heater that you plug into the wall. Those are all going to be 100% efficient uh, at using the electricity or turning it into heat. Uh, of course, the electricity is like 30% efficient in reality because they have to burn the coal that they burn ends up being, I think it's 30% of the energy used from coal ends up uh, in usable electricity. But anyway, that is extremely costly at nearly, well, a little over $3,500 per million BTU. So if you have electric resistance heat right now and you are thinking about doing something different and you have natural gas or propane available, it would be very, very smart to pursue one of those. Okay, so moving on, electric geothermal or heat pump so this is like uh, an air source heat pump looks like an air conditioner but it can reverse in the winter time and basically pump heat in instead of pumping heat out which is what an air conditioner does those can run at up to 300 percent efficient now i actually changed the default number up to 300 percent just to make this number look a little bit better because that is what sometimes is marketed but 250 percent two to 300 percent is probably more realistic so we're putting in our cost per unit, still 12 cents. That's how many BTUs. But since it's 250 or 300%, we end up getting a lot more uh, BTUs back than this because we're not really creating heat with a heat pump. We're moving heat. We're either moving heat from out the outside air into the house is basically the concept or from in the ground into the house using a refrigerant cycle. So $1,172. So I actually have an air source heat pump at my place, uh, but we haven't been using it because propane last year was like 90 cents. So it was actually cheaper to burn propane than it was to run our uh, geothermal, or not geothermal, sorry, uh, my air source heat pump. Uh, and I'll, I'll walk over there at the end of this video and show you it a little bit more. Uh, but I don't really wanna wear that thing out uh, just to get the same price. You're, if you have a similar cost to run a, a air source heat pump or natural gas or propane, I always burn propane or natural gas because that's not your furnace really isn't going to wear out in the same way that a compressor inside of an, a heat pump will. So, okay, we'll move on and I'll come back to that later. Okay, fuel oil number two. So this is basically like diesel fuel kind of. Uh, that's At least that's what I've been told uh, we work on fuel oil furnaces sometimes I don't know how different it is from actual diesel but it smells the same 254 is the average price nationwide right now and 138,690 BTUs uh, per gallon 80% efficient 
is what this is calculated at. A lot of times these are boilers, but you can get higher efficiency than that depending on, but still we're looking at a pretty steep price, 2,289. And if that price continues to go back up, like oil prices have been, uh, that could get pretty costly. So in our area, uh, fuel oil is really not a good option because propane and natural gas pretty much dominate. Uh, but in Alaska, uh, I was talking to my brother-in-law, uh, fuel oil is quite a bit cheaper than propane, and so they have a lot of fuel oil furnaces, consequently. <clears throat> okay, down to wood. Now, if you have a free wood source and lots of time that that uh, you can work on burning wood, obviously that's going to be your cheapest option. Kind of interesting, an uh, 8 by 4 by 4 block, which is a full cord of wood, contains about 22 million BTUs. That's right, 22 million so that's pretty amazing uh, different types of wood if it's hardwood or softer wood uh, those are going to have different BTU contents so you have to pay attention to that a little bit 70% efficient because wood burning stoves are usually not super efficient and then that comes out to be that price if you paid money for your wood at $250 a cord $1623 and coal I put on here just for fun uh, you can look at that if you want, but I think that's pretty irrelevant to most people. Uh, so, <clears throat> anyway, yeah, really interesting and kind of exciting to understand that what the numbers currently stand at. Um, I like propane. Uh, it's the best option for us in our area. <clears throat> I especially like, now that we have these two tanks here, which maybe you guys saw in a previous video anyway, uh, we have enough fuel to make it through an entire year so we don't actually have to uh, fill this up during the winter, so we can fill up during the summer, which is uh, less expensive, which is fantastic. Okay, let's go over to that uh, air source heat pump, and I'll just point out a couple things. So you can tell this is a heat pump because it is elevated off the ground. This is a very glorified heat pump stand. It's a little bit unnecessary. <laughs> My brother-in-law and I welded this up, and uh, my goal was just to have something that was up off the ground so that when I landscape it, I don't have to landscape around four individual feet. And we want this thing to be up off the ground because of snow load, or not snow load, but snow on the ground. Uh, you don't want it to climb up the side of your heat pump. So the only difference between a heat pump and an air conditioner is that there is a reversing valve in it. There's different electronic controls that make it work, uh, but basically, there's a valve in there that switches over that pumps refrigerant in the opposite direction in order to um, produce heat in the house or basically extract heat from outside and move it to the inside. So let me just say if I can take a peek down on the top of this thing for you. So right here in the top, we look down in here and there's a lot more going on than there would be if this was an air conditioner. You can see right there, I'll try to zoom in on it. There's a little electronic solenoid that is in charge of uh, moving the, there's like a piston thing that switches between the flow of refrigerant back and forth. So <clears throat> your heat pump is obviously responsible for also doing your air conditioning. And that's why uh, if the prices are similar, <clears throat> like I was saying a few minutes ago, uh, I'd highly recommend burning gas or burning uh, propane uh, rather than running your heat pump. So, because your heat pump is utilizing 30% efficient coal anyway, <laughs> which is electricity. Um, so, yeah, uh, we like to see at least 20 years of longevity out of a air conditioning compressor. But what I've seen <clears throat> is that in heat pump applications, usually you get you get less you obviously get less life out of a heat pump compressor because it's running all summer and all winter so yeah i wouldn't really and also your efficiency drops on air air source heat pumps so once the temperature gets down to 20 degrees or lower your efficiency drops way off down to where you're getting you know 150 percent and then you're really not making money at all so Overall, not a super fan of heat pumps at the moment, but technology little by little changes and gets better sometimes. But so yeah, that's the air source heat pump. 
Now, a geothermal heat pump is a little bit better in that it gets a really consistent uh, temperature coming from the ground. If there's a loop field, that loop field does drop in temperature over the winter, uh, but it generally does a better job. You know, if it's 20 below zero outside, this heat pump won't work here in Minnesota. It just won't work, period. So you have to have alternative uh, fuel to heat your house. But if you're further down south and you only have a couple weeks or a couple months out of the winter that are cold enough where you really need heat, then a heat pump like this might be a pretty good option. So a lot of this is very subject to your area and what is best in your situation. Holy cow, this video is already almost 16 minutes long. So thank you if you are still here. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, but otherwise, this is just kind of for fun anyway. So a couple of the thoughts that I have with the different fuel types here are more of my prepper tendency coming out. So I'm one of those people that likes to be semi-prepared for outages. And uh, to keep in mind on the if you're thinking about buying a heating system and you also have that same uh, disease, <laughs> then uh, natural gas uh, is based on a pipeline system. That is very interruptible depending on, it's been very consistent, but in cases of natural disaster, I don't know how that would hold up or how long, how long you might be out of heat. <clears throat> same thing holds true for electric. Those things are very subject to the grid and all of that. Uh, whereas we have our wood here, which is and fuel oil number two and coal and propane are all mass storage uh, options. So you gather wood and you have that out in the woodshed or you have coal or a couple tanks of fuel oil. You have some time and some buffer space where if there was an emergency, you would have, you know, a month or two even or maybe even a whole winter worth of fuel to heat your house. Same thing for propane, obviously. So that's something to consider potentially, but not something to worry about, I wouldn't say. Uh, but yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. I think we beat this subject absolutely to death. Uh, I think I'll try to do this maybe every year and do an update on what the most cost efficient options are. So right now it's natural gas, propane, and I think that's, those are pretty much my two favorites for sure. And then possibly fuel oil, depending on if you live in Alaska or not. So, Or if you like to chop wood and you can get free wood from somewhere, do that. So, <coughs> All right, I think that's all for now. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up button if this was helpful. And uh, hit that subscribe button down below and the bell icon to be notified about future videos. <sighs> All right, we'll talk to you guys later. See ya.